Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this session of the AgriAbility webinar series. My name is Paul Jones, and I'm the manager of the National AgriAbility Project, which is headquartered at Purdue University. Today's topic is increasing visual accessibility on agricultural machinery. Before we get started with the actual presentation, just a few quick webinar instructions and reminders. Of course, if you are hearing me, you will know that we need speakers or headphones for this presentation as there is no phone connection. If you'd like to check or adjust your sound, you may do so via, via the meeting menu at the top left of your screen and the audio setup wizard. If you have any questions during the presentation about the presentation, please feel, to, feel free to type those into the chat window on the left side of your screen and hit the return icon. Also, we will be having a question and answer period after the presentation is concluded. If you do have a web camera and microphone or simply a, a microphone, you may use the raise hand icon at the top of your screen and we will uh, then attempt to, to activate your microphone so that you can ask your question verbally. We have four quick survey questions at the end. We'd appreciate you sticking around to complete those to give us some feedback about the session. We are recording this session and we are archiving it along with the rest of our webinars at the agribility.org website. A specific link is listed on your page. If you'd like to go ahead and click that to mark that page, feel free, so, free to do so. Uh, if you have any technical issues uh, during the session, we recommend that you first try to use the chat window to communicate those. And if you uh, are not able to do that, please email us at agribility at agribility.org. And we'll plan to put that in the chat window also for your reference. And uh, we will be monitoring that email account during the presentation. Some of the issues we know have occurred in the past, if you're experiencing echo, make sure that you are not logged in twice. If so, just close one of your windows. If for some reason we're disconnected with our presenter, and please just hang on and we will reconnect as soon as quickly as quickly as possible. And if you are disconnected as a participant, please just log in again. For those that are not familiar with AgriAbility, our program is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and we focus on assisting farmers, ranchers, and other agricultural workers with dis disabilities. That could be uh, spinal cord injuries, amputations, arthritis, or behavioral health issues, a wide variety of issues that we deal with. Every AgriAbility project is a partnership between a land-grant university and at least one nonprofit disability-related service organization, and there is one national project that assists the other projects around the country. Our project at Purdue Partners currently with Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, the Arthritis Foundation Heartland Region out of Indianapolis, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and Colorado State University. Please feel free to check out more about AgriAbility at agribility.org. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to our presenter, Sean Ehlers. He's going to give the bulk of the presentation and a turn uh, at the end for our poll questions. And just as a note, Sean will not be using a uh, camera to broadcast during the presentation itself, so it's not a, a technical issue if you don't see him presenting. Okay. Well, thank you, Paul, for the introduction, and uh, welcome, everyone, to our uh, webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name is Sean Ehlers. I'm a doctoral student here at Purdue University in the Department of Agricultural and Biological Engineering. My topic of, uh, of research is assessing visibility uh, and viewing technology on agricultural equipment. So my research primarily focuses on the rearward visibility of agricultural equipment. So that's what we're mostly going to talk about in this presentation today. So for an outline, we have uh, four basic topics in this presentation that we're going to discuss. First is what is assistive viewing technology? 
uh, changes in agric agricultural equipment design over the years, advances in viewing technology, and lastly, uh, an assessment of agricultural equipment uh, visibility. So here we have two tractors that we will be comparing. Uh, on the left is a tractor from the mid-1980s, and on the right is a uh, current production tractor. So the first thing we need to discuss would be what is uh, visibility or assistive visibility when we're talking about agricultural equipment. So when we talk about this, we're discussing any instrument that aids in the observation of an individual surrounding area. And this can be through you know, uh, ergonomic equipment design, mirrors, cameras, et cetera, any, you know, anything like that, individually and collectively working together to improve visibility and minimize blind spots. So the first thing when we talk about visibility would be lighting. So lighting is a big topic. Um, in the United States, about 58, uh, well, 58 is the average age of a farmer or operator here in the United States. And at this age, uh, a person's eyes can only receive about 40% of the light that we could when we were 20 years old. So we need to increase the amount of lighting that we can provide to the operator to have a safe surrounding. So a 360 degree Exterior lighting is common on uh, today's production tractors. Uh, typically, we, we used to use halogen lighting, like on the tractor here on the left, the older series tractors, and these lights lasted about 2,000 hours. Today, on uh, current production tractors, we have a couple of different options of lighting. First would be xenon lights. Uh, xenon lights have about 10 times the life of a halogen hit out four times as much light output and consume about 35% less power. Another option when discussing lighting on modern tractors would be LED lighting. Uh, LEDs have about 44 times the life, uh, lifespan of an original halogen light and they, uh, they consume about 57% less power. And Paul, oh, my... Uh, display just went away. So hold on one second. There we go. We're all back. Uh, so we have 57% less power from an LED, uh, LED lights. We need to notice the position of lights when we discuss um, lighting on agricultural uh, equipment. So lights positioned in direct line of the operator's line of sight create maximum illumination of dust particles. So that's why when looking at the tractors, both the old and new series tractors here in the bottom of the page, that this is why you see the lights on the top of the cab and below uh, at the front of the tractor and, and on the uh, top of the fender. So you notice that there are no lights at the same parallel or, or uh, sight plane as the operator's eyes. And this is to reduce the illumination of dust particles, thus increase the visibility of the operator. Next thing we'll discuss would be uh, the positioning of components such as air intake and exhaust location. So we notice on the tractor on the left from the mid-80s that the exhaust and air intake are uh, just off-center in front of the operator's forward view. Uh, these positions can be quite distracting and impair forward visibility. And modern tractors have changed this significantly. So they've completely removed the uh, external location of the air intake and they have uh, moved the exhaust location to coincide with the front corner pillar of the cab. So you always have a, a, a corner pillar on a cab. It's, it's just unavoidable due to uh, the rollover protection system. So, you know, it's, it's best for designers to make use of this obstruction and coincide uh, that with the exhaust location. And that is what they've done. The next thing we'll discuss will be cab design. So cab designs have changed significantly over the years. Uh, I'd like to call attention to the uh, type of windscreens or, or the glass. So notice on the current production tractor, the tractor on the bottom right, uh, has large unobstructed glass panels. And this allows you know, great visibility. You know, the operators do not have uh, individual panes, as you see there on the tractor on the left, that the windows are smaller and are kind of boxed out. Uh, framed uh, by just the design of the cab. 
So what happens when we have uh, obstructions that are parallel to the eye plane, so any type of framing around a window or, or just any obstruction parallel to the eye plane, we create the maximum uh, intrusiveness uh, visibility for the operator. And next we have hood design. So you notice on the tractor on the left, the older series tractor, that the hood is very flat and uh, short and stumpy, whereas the newer model tractors have a long sloping hood that tapers as it approaches the uh, cab of the operator. So what this does, it allows the operator to have a, a better uh, visual uh, observation of the area behind the tires and, and next to the, uh, the body of the tractor. This also allows for a tighter turning radius for the tractor in general. The last comparison I'd like to make between these two tractors would be the mirrors. Uh, notice that the tractor on the left does not have any external extended arm mirrors. It, just, it was just equipped with an internal uh, mirror, whereas the tractor on the right has external mirrors. And these extended arm mirrors allow the, op allow the operator to see out and around any implement in tow. Uh, these mirrors are not always a standard option on um, many current production tractors even today, but they are quite common on uh, row crop tractors that we uh, mainly encounter. Uh, I would like to mention a little bit more about these mirrors, so we will discuss them in uh, a few slides from now. Before that, we're going to talk about some interior visibility improvements. So first, we have ergonomic control positioning. So see the, the red circle at the bottom? This is the control arm or command arm as John Deere refers to this to as. And what this does is it anchors uh, the position of all the controls on the right hand uh, arm of the seat. And these seats and these modern tractors do rotate and swivel up to 40 degrees, which I'll discuss here shortly. But what this does by anchoring it to the motion of the seat is the operator does not lose uh, an anchor point or orientation with the controls while moving around in the tractor. Next we have a readable and understandable instrumentation. So older tractor used to, used to use an analog gauge or analog gauges uh, to display all the different characteristics or operation parameters that's going on with the tractor. Modern agricultural equipment has gone to LCD panels and touchscreen displays. Um, these can be slightly overwhelming to some operators, uh, but they do have some benefits in allowing the operator to focus in on certain parameters they'd like to monitor, be it the uh, implement that's in tow, say a planter or a sprayer or any other type of operation, that they can all be uh, tuned in and uh, read all the diagnostic material. Uh, data off of the implement. So they have allowed us to uh, observe a lot of data that's coming in from both our tractor and our implement. Entry and exit visibility. So this goes back a little bit to the cab design. Uh, remember on the previous slide where we looked at the older series tractor and how the door was uh, kind of sectioned off in, in different panels of glass. Well, this tractor, a modern tractor here uh, pictured, has a very large and unobstructed door. What this does is it allows the operator to be aware of their surroundings, and it also allows them to be aware of any individual that's approaching the, the vehicle. So if there's a, a farmhand or you know a helper that's coming to the field to uh, tell the operator something, we, we have a better visibility of that person as they approach the vehicle. And here we have interior and exterior uh, mirrors. So there are many different types of mirrors, and we'll discuss this shortly. But you can see that the exterior extended arm mirrors are positioned out and away from the cab, and they allow for just a wider field of view. And uh, they very really assist the operator in field operations. Last thing on this page would be the redesign forward view. The, uh, the hood, like I mentioned in the previous slide, is now a more tapered, wasp-like design. 
and you can see here in this picture that it doesn't create a huge visual in, impairment when you looking when looking forward. It, uh, actually, from the operator's view here, the steering wheel covers most of the hood. So uh, they have significantly improved uh, forward visibility, and that, that's where a lot of the design uh, attention has been focused. Um, so take note on that, and as we focus here in this presentation, more of a rearward visibility of the equipment. So continuing with interior visibility, Notice the top left picture that has a diagram of a human head, and what this is showing is the average uh, direction or the how many degrees of angle a person can turn their head. So the average human can turn their head about 60 to 80 degrees in either direction. When talking about operators with any impairment to their range of motion, uh, they would require some sort of assistive device such as mirrors or cameras uh, to obtain a safe awareness of the surrounding area. Moving over, we have the operator that's sitting in this uh, seat that is a 40 degree rotating seat. It also has the command arm. So there's a couple things to discuss when, when looking at this picture. So when the command arm, what that does is it allows the controls to move with the seat and the operator to maintain an anchored orientation in the full range of motion of the seat. Uh, this can lead to improved reaction time and it also allows the uh, operator to uh, always have a fixed fixed anchored spot to uh, adjust speed or adjust any parameter of the, of the implement in tow. It used to be that we could not rotate seats as much as we can now. So um, Case and John Deere, all the big manufacturers, they now rotate their seats to the right up to 40 degrees. What happened when you rotate your seats too far in the past is the operator would lose contact with the clutch and brake pedals. And this would be uh, dangerous for, for field operations. You know, the operator would, would not have full control if they needed to make an, an abrupt stop or you know, any, any type of reaction like that if the operator would lose orientation with the clutch and brakes. On modern tractors, we now have uh, IVT transmissions, which is infinitely variable, and that's controlled by a joystick. Case has what they call a multi-function handle, so depending on the brand, it's just a little bit different labeling, but they both basically do the same thing, and what it does, it controls the forward and reverse uh, direction and speed of the, uh, of the tractor. So notice the little red knob, or orange knob in the operator's right hand on the uh, picture in the top right, and this is the control for the IVT transmission. And like I said, that the operator does not have to have full contact with the clutch and brake uh, like they used to on older series tractors in order to stop or change gears or any type of speed change in any type of uh, a field operation. They can just adjust the joystick to adapt to any parameter that they need to adjust to. So that is very useful on, on uh, modern tractors, and that's why they can actually allow the seats to adjust so far in the 40 degree rotation. What's very important about this rotating seat is it allows operators that might not have the full range of view or a full range of rotation of their head to see behind them. So by rotating this seat in this 40 degrees to the right, the operator doesn't have to turn their head quite as far to uh, monitor the imp implement in tow. So here we're going to talk about some available technology uh, dealing with mirrors. So mirrors have had some uh, downsides to them in, in their uh, existence on, in the agricultural industry. Uh, the first we're going to discuss is extended arm mirrors. So as you can see on the combine in the bottom right and on this case tractor on the top right, uh, these mirrors extend out, allowing you to see out and around uh, the implement in tow. Problems in the past have uh, dealt with image distortion through vibration, be it from the engine or the rough terrain in a field or any, any type of vibration which can lead to image distortion. Also, they can be prone to breakage due to their location. Yes, they are extended out and away from the cab, so 
you know, many fields have overhanging uh, tree limbs that can that can break these mirrors, and they do have a breakaway function, but they can still be easily broken. Also, uh, pole buildings, so, you know, barns can be quite hazardous to these mirrors if the operator isn't completely paying attention. Uh, I would like to call attention to the uh, extended arm mirror in the upper right-hand corner. So this mirror is uh, unique. This is a, a case mirror. And what this mirror does is it has two mirrors in one. So in, in the one casing, it has a larger mirror on top for rearward, rearward visibility. And the lower mirror at the bottom is positioned uh, lower so the operator can actually monitor uh, the area closer to the tractor. So that is a very nice function that they have in their extended arm mirror. Uh, the last problem that has, has been encountered with extended arm mirrors deals with the curvature of the mirror. So these mirrors are convex, allowing for a wider field of view by being a, a, a curved surface, but this also distorts the image slightly. So the operator does not always have a true representation of what's exactly behind them due to slight image distortion. Next, we have an interior mirror circled here in the bottom left. Uh, this mirror is, is common on almost all, all tractors, all cab tractors. And this mirror, too, is, uh, has some slight curvature to it, so there is some distortion. These mirrors are excellent in seeing behind the, uh, directly behind the uh, tractor or agricultural implement. But the problem is that is uh, commonly encountered with these mirrors is that if a tall implement, or say like a, a grain cart, for example, is behind the tractor, these mirrors are uh, virtually useless because they are completely impaired by that tall implement. So uh, a, an example I always like to bring up is when I, I'm harvesting grain in the fall and I have to transport my, my grain back to my, my grain bins, um, these interior mirrors are completely obstructed by uh, my grain cart behind me. And it, say I'm turning left off of a road, which is always a big hazard when you uh, have agricultural equipment. Um, you're unable to see any cars approaching or trying to make a, a pass until you actually start turning and then sometimes it's too late. So these mirrors are not very good for that. Extended arm mirrors help significantly uh, just depending on the size and location how far back that car is because as we'll discuss later I will go over some uh, actual recorded data from uh, visual observations of mirrors and cameras. Uh, you, there's a significant blind spot behind these, these uh, types of implements. The last thing I'd like to mention before moving on to this hitching mirror was uh, one last comment on the interior mirror. And if you notice a picture in the bottom left, um, the operator seat is, right, is there in the center and you can also have a severe obstruction from the operator themselves. You know, you're, you're looking back at a mirror and at a picture of yourself oftentimes, and it obstructs uh, quite a bit of your view because of that. Some, uh, some manufacturers actually position this mirror in uh, some less than an ideal locations where the radio or any type of control from the cab actually uh, hang down from the roof and impair the, the full view of this mirror. So uh, while being a handy you know, very useful mirror, it does have some issues with uh, obstructions. And I skipped forward too far. There we go, a hitching mirror. So this is the last mirror that I'd like to discuss. Uh, this mirror is not quite as common in, ag in uh, agricultural equipment, but it is very useful. So this mirror is actually located in the top corner of a cab, so the operator can turn and look at this mirror and it allows them to see the hitching location. So when they're uh, hooking up to an implement or they have an assistant helping them hook up to an implement, this mirror is very useful, especially if they don't have the uh, full range of motion and ability to turn and view the hitching area. So now we have a, a commercial, and this commercial is promoting regulation proposed by the National Highway uh, and Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And it's promoting new regulations 
for vehicles, highway vehicles, under 10,000 pounds to have a backup camera by May of 2018. So let's take a, a quick look at this video and you'll see how they've really been pushing for it. Get in into our vehicles times. every day. Check the side and rear view mirrors. Look back, ready to go. But wait. Behind the vehicle are 62 children and not a single one could be seen. Technology already exists that can eliminate the blind zone. Please protect your children and equip your vehicle. Don't back blind. See the children. Okay, so as you see from that video, that there has been quite a push in the auto industry to equip vehicles with uh, camera technology. And we've seen some adaption to the ag industry uh, as well. Oops, I went the wrong direction. There we go. So this uh, panel here, this slide here, is showing some of the adaptions that have been made to the ag industry. So what we have here is a, a kit here in the center, an LCD display with a camera. So this kit in particular is from VisionWorks, but what it's different about it is it's uh, manufactured specifically for an industrial or agricultural application. So the camera is, is quite robust and it's on a uh, magnetic base. So what this does is it allows operators to move this camera from various implements that they, they hook to and uh, easily change from, from task to task. On the uh, far right and far left pictures, we can see precision monitors. So these precision monitors are, are quite, um, uh, they, they are, are very common in, in today's agricultural row crop equipment. And what we can do with these precision monitors is tap into this LCD display that's currently in our tractors and broadcast this video feed. So it is possible to, to actually input this video input to our existing monitors. Uh, I've spoken to uh, representatives from both Case and John Deere and all their new production tractors and, and uh, field equipment will have inputs already installed from factory with uh, the option of, in, of installing up to two to three uh, video inputs. So this technology is growing in the ag field. It just hasn't had quite the push as the automotive industry, um, which is where a lot of this is being carried over from. Commonly, common uses here that we see in the ag industry deal with a lot in uh, grain harvesting. So uh, operators will put these cameras on their combines to monitor uh, grain flow into a grain cart or a semi-trailer where we sometimes cannot see uh, into these, these um, areas. So it keeps operators from pouring their grain on the ground if they should overflow a, a cart or a, a semi-trailer. Another location where uh, farmers use these cameras would be in a livestock, so in, like a birthing barn or something of that nature. So the operator can, or the farmer can observe what's going on in his, in his barns, you know, if he's waiting for, you know, a, a, a a mother to give birth and he can monitor that from the house instead of having to constantly go out to the barn to check on on progress. So there are many applications and it just seems to be growing all the time. So this next video uh, is from VisionWorks and what this does it shows an operator backing up to a, a flatbed trailer. So this is just another application of how we can use these um, these video monitors and uh, cameras and monitors to assist us with many applications. So uh, we have operators that have difficulty in turning their heads. In in this case, anytime you're hooking up with a pickup truck, you always have that blind spot directly behind the tailgate. And so what this operator has done, they have positioned the camera just directly below the hitch, and they could back up the first time to the um, to the hitching uh, location 
without anybody directing them. So that is a, a very big uh, plus for operators that might, might work alone or somebody with any type of impairment that has difficulty, you know, getting out of the cab. Because I know sometimes this can take several tries to you know, always to get it in the exact spot when you can't see uh, very well. So. After this, we have one more video, and this is to show uh, operation in field. So another application of using this camera and, and monitor technology. So operators can monitor field operations while maintaining a forward posture. So they don't have to turn around all the time to, to view what's going on. Equipment monitoring, such as you know, hay or silage, combine harvesters, uh, another application would be to monitor gauges, such as in a, a spraying application. You can see how many, you know, PSI or or flow gauges, such as in side dressing, to monitor to see if you have any any plugged hoses or or lines. Um, I know when I spray, you, I spend a lot of time looking backwards just to to make sure that I don't have issues like that. And when you do this, you take your eyes off of your forward direction and you uh, open yourself up to many hazards by doing that. Uh, I recently read a paper that um, looked at how much time an operator used uh, spent looking behind them in the average field uh, operation. I believe the operation I was reading about was a, a bailing operation. And uh, this, this piece of literature I read reported that operators spend up to 40% of their time looking backwards. And what we encounter when we're in these awkward positions, uh, such as looking backwards, is uh, vibrations and jolts and you know bumps that you have in the field. And they can impose more abuse to the operator when you're in these awkward positions. Uh, so not only do we, we hurt ourselves by not having a uh, a forward view of where we're moving in the field, but we can also, you know, cause damage to our bodies by uh, being in these awkward positions and monitoring our equipment all the time. So this slide here, I'm, I'm not trying to advertise for Radio Shack, but I found this ad quite interesting. So this is a sales ad from 1991. And what I'm trying to do here is convey how technology has decreased in price over, over time. So the cost of all these items on this page in today's dollars, present day dollars, is about $5,000. Uh, the interesting part about this is the function of every item in this ad can be accomplished by a common smartphone that a lot of us carry around in our pockets all the time. So it's just amazing how compact and how easily available uh, the, the technology has, has advanced. And we see the same thing when we uh, discuss camera technology uh, in, in using that in both automotive and uh, agricultural applications. So on this page, what we have are kits featured mainly for industrial and agricultural applications. So on the top left is a VisionWorks 7 inch uh, monitor with a high resolution camera. Uh, you notice that the camera again is on a magnetic base and it has uh, LED lights in the surrounding to help with uh, night or low light applications. And uh, these are just, these are all just um, kits that uh, people can purchase to put on their equipment. The center kit here is by CabCam, another very common uh, manufacturer of, uh, of agricultural cameras. And this is a wireless kit. So the top center kit is a wireless kit. And it allows the operator to put these cameras anywhere they'd like on their implement without stringing wires everywhere. Another option to, to save some money to go with a, a black and white display, such as the one pictured in the top right. And then we have the color uh, option there in the bottom right. I'd like to draw your attention to the very bottom left picture. And what this has is a camera that is on a special mounting bracket that coincides with a license plate. So what this does, you just take your two bolts or two screws out of your license plate. And it allows the operator or anybody to easily attach this camera to their vehicle. So be it a... Uh, in a farm situation such as a, a pickup truck or a grain truck or, or anything like that, it, you can easily mount these cameras just 
uh, on top of the license plate bracket. Um, this is a wired connection as, as well as the one above it. And they, there are benefits to having a wired connection in these camera kits. When we go to wireless kits, sometimes we run into uh, difficulties with interference. Uh, the signals broadcast from these wireless cameras are a, a radio frequency and we can run into interference from you know anytime you don't have a very clear line of sight between the uh, trans uh, the receiver and the transducer so uh, with that being said wireless kits can be extremely you know useful and that's what this kit is here in the center uh, what this does it turns any wired camera into a wireless camera all you need to have is a power source in both locations so there are many options for operators to, to uh, adapt this technology to their operation. On the next slide here are some more camera kits. But these camera kits are uh, mainly intended for, an autom for the automotive industry. And they might not be quite as robust as the uh, camera kits that are designated specifically for uh, agriculture and industry. Uh, as a trade-off for the robust design that we had on the previous slide, you notice that these kits are significantly less expensive. Um, and so depending on the application or you know uh, how the operator feels, uh, this might be a perfectly reasonable uh, avenue to take. So we can see that we can get a seven inch window mount, you know full kit um, with for about seventy eight dollars. Whereas we move over here, this is a license plate uh, camera, and this is only about fourteen dollars. So uh, it's these cameras are, are very they're they're very good cameras. They have HD display, you know, HD signal, or they have an HD image, and uh, so they do have a pretty good image. Uh, downside, they just might not be quite as robust. Uh, but one thing to notice is that they are a hundred and seventy degree angle. So uh, a straight line is 180 degrees, so the angle that these uh, cameras can present to the rearward view is, is a very good field of view. Uh, moving around the circle, here's another uh, HD camera, and it's a 170 degree as well, and it's only $15. And we have a wireless kit, and lastly is just a 7-inch monitor uh, to you know, use any type of these cameras on your application. So we'll see a little bit more of this in the slides to come. So this is my friend Dave. Um, so Dave is a rancher and uh, in southern Indiana. He had about 20 years ago a neck injury so he does not have full you know range of motion in in the rotation of his neck. He also has poor depth perception due to some uh, vision loss in one eye. And Dave and I were talking uh, last fall or, or last Christmas, and um, he was telling me how he's he's always you know afraid of backing into something or someone. You know, he has frequent visits from his grandchildren, and uh, he uses this UTV um, quite frequently. He, he checks his horses. He, he does farm maintenance with it. He uh, takes feed out to areas, and so. Uh, he uses it all the time, but he's he's just afraid because he can't see behind him very well. So what Dave did was uh, install some extended arm mirrors, as you see here beside him. And later I came in and installed this backup camera you see here mounted to his dash. So we can zoom in a little bit, and we can see this backup camera a little closer, along with the two extended arm mirrors that, that Dave installed. Uh, I'd like to bring attention to the, the extended mirrors on each side, and they do a very good job. They're, they're wide mirrors, they're, they have a very good you know, field of view, but one problem that we have with these mirrors is, if you notice, they only look down the side of the vehicle. They look down the bed of his UTV, the bed rails on each side. So the area directly behind his UTV is still you know, kind of a mystery. You know, you have this this area that's a very hazardous area. You can back into someone or something, and uh, it's still not, you know, in his area of, of of vision. So when we installed this camera, 
um, we, we put it directly in the center underneath the tailgate, which we'll see in the next slide. But before we go to that, I'd like to point out the, uh, this uh, image inside the, on this picture. And what happens is it, it kind of has a, a water print uh, overlaid on the image. And what this is is a grid system that's built into the camera. And once we installed this, we just measured it one time, and Dave can commit this to memory. And it allows him to reference the distance of an object behind him uh, using this grid system. So um, the farthest, uh, farthest line on this grid we measured to be about three foot away. And by knowing that, Dave is able to back up to things and have a reference of how far he is uh, from, from that object. So this is where we mounted the camera. And as you can see, it's a very small camera. It's about the size of a, about the size of a 50 cent piece. So it's, it's not very large. It's, it's uh, completely waterproof, proof, as is all the cameras that I've discussed so far. And what we did, it just took two, two bolts and we mounted it to the uh, underbed frame rail of this UTV. Uh, it was quite simple to do. And then uh, the next thing we had to do is find a power source. So lucky for us, this uh, Polaris Ranger that we put this on has uh, all time or full time running tail lights. So we had a constant 12 volt supply uh, just a couple foot away. So it was very simple to tie into uh, this power supply. And the next step, all we had to do was to run a single video wire up to our monitor. Uh, so it was not a very, very difficult, you know, install and it was very inexpensive for him, you know, the, the uh, the route he chose to go, the whole setup was about $42, $45 uh, in total. So, you know, it was, it, was, it was very inexpensive and is actually significantly cheaper than what his extended arm mirrors cost. So uh, it gave him a great you know, view behind his vehicle and, and uh, he was very happy with uh, the results. So this would be the last part of our presentation. So we're going to talk about assessing equipment visibility. Uh, to do this, I designed a 25 foot by 25 foot grid um, with a cell size of five foot by five foot. So you can see that cell size right there uh, as, a, as a blue cell with the X in it. In the midpoint of each cell, I, uh, I had a flag that represented uh, the average height of an American man, woman, and 10-year-old child. So I had three indicator flags in each cell. So that gave us a reference on, you know, how tall of a person or, you know, the, the uh, level of visibility we'd have behind a vehicle. So in this experiment, we positioned a tractor or a, uh, any type of ag implement uh, in front of this grid and positioned it at the farthest extruding point or protruding point, such as the hitch in most applications uh, in the center of this grid. And this allowed us to view and compare the visibility of just a, a tractor or any implement, compare that to when we have an implement in tow as pictured in the bottom. So first we looked at what we could see with the mirrors. So we used the uh, extended arm mirrors and we used the uh, internal cab mirror and all these mirrors together to see what what level of visibility we could we could achieve from a, a standard tractor that on a, a dealer's lot. Then we wanted to compare this to what we could see with the addition of a backup camera or a rear view camera. And so we was wanted to compare the results and see you know how much we could gain out of this um, in these types of experiments. So that's exactly what we did. So first up, we have a, a uh, combine. And notice the flags behind the combine. There's uh, three ribbons on each pole. And these ribbons, there is an orange ribbon, a pink ribbon, and a green ribbon. And like I said, that represented the average height of a man, woman, and child. So as we see, this camera has extended arm, I mean this camera, this uh, combine has extended arm mirrors on it. Um, but if you have any experience in agriculture, you know that uh, combines are just notorious for horrible rear visibility. You always hear about how uh, a farmer backed into 
you know, a, a grain cart or they backed into a, a truck or something or any something that was parked behind them that they couldn't see. Uh, so it's, it's very common and um, it's quite expensive when we do that. And it can be quite tragic if it's a person. So that's mainly what this, this research is um, intended for is to, you know, cut down on any type of, you know, horrible accidents like that. So by looking at these two grids, so this is our, our 25 foot by 25 foot grid, both on the left and right panels, uh, showing the uh, results from each mirror. So the left extended arm mirror had about a 75% obstructed view, uh, same as the right hand side. So you notice the red is obstructed view and green is the visible area of this grid. So we had a 75% obstructed view. Uh, behind the combine. So basically what this was is you could see down the side of the combine uh, but nothing else. So this combine actually had a camera installed on it from factory. Um, what John Deere did is they, they mounted the camera quite high on the back of this combine and this caused some obstruction still at the immediate rear area but it did significantly in, uh, improve the visible area to just 28% obstructed view as seen in this picture. Uh, notice the purple tiles in the center. Uh, that's where a child is not visible. So what this meant is uh, the camera was just able to see the tops of the heads of say a full-grown uh, man or woman, but a child was too short to be visible in this location. So uh, by mounting the camera up high is, is why we had that obstructed area in that location. But there is a reason for mounting a camera up that high, uh, especially on a combine, because uh, combines produce quite a dust cloud. And when producing that much dust, uh, the camera, by raising it, is able to move up and above uh, the dust cloud slightly to uh, improve the visibility of that area. So next, we compared this to a, uh, a quad track articulated tractor. So you can see the grid set up behind the tractor. And we once again, we measured the external mirrors on the right and left hand side. And with this particular tractor, we had a 60% obstructed view on the left hand mirror and a 68% obstructed view on the right hand mirror. Uh, I will say that we, we tested the camera location in quite a few different spots to see uh, what was, you know, what delivered the most benefit to the operator in increasing, their, increasing the visibility to the rear. So this result here shows the camera mounted on the PTO shield. So other locations I tried, uh, you can see in this picture that where there's a, a large bar where the flashers go across the back of the uh, back of the tractor. And so we positioned the camera initially there to see what the rearward visibility was, but there was uh, quite a uh, obstruction caused by the three-point hitch. So it had a quick hitch uh, on this implement. So that quick hitch, you know, caused quite the uh, obstruction. So we moved the camera location to actually the, the mounting location of the quick hitch. Um, not in the area, the, the fixed location, not the hitch uh, where it actually moved. And this still delivered an obstructed view from the uh, hitch itself. So we found that the best place to mount this camera was actually just above the PTO shield um, on, the, on the tractor. So it's just about a foot, maybe two foot above the actual drawbar. So by doing this, we reduced our... Um, obstructed area to just 35%, down from 60 and 68%. So a 35% obstructed view when using a camera. When, compare, when combining this camera with extended arm mirrors, so the uh, range of visibility was reduced to uh, obstructed area of just 24%. I would like to point out that the width of the tractor was only three cells wide. So you see these two uh, these three cells on the right and left hand side of this uh, grid, see that's actually outside the width of the tractor and outside of, it's it, more of a hazardous area. It, it's not as hazardous as the area directly behind the tractor. You know. uh, but as we get closer, 
in or when we have an implement in tow, this area is extremely hazardous if the implement is that wide. But if you notice that the area of visibility actually expands as we move farther away from the tractor. So the blue arrow is where the tractor is, and this is the farthest away that we tested, and the area of visibility is uh, quite good in these locations. So the last tractor I'm going to discuss today would be this uh, Magnum here with a 1,100 bushel grain cart in tow. So uh, whenever you have an implement like this, it causes a, a huge visibility issue to the rear. So what we see here is an 84% obstructed view when using our extended arm mirrors on both the left and right hand side of the tractor. Uh, I also tested the interior mirror on this, and it was a 100% obstructed view. You could not see anything behind the tractor except the, uh, the front of the cart. So by adding this camera, we added this camera to the cart and mounted it on the frame, on the cross member of the frame of the cart, and we could reduce the obstructed view from 84% down to 4% obstructed view. So that is just a huge... Um, benefit that we can achieve by using uh, this type of technology, especially on uh, implements where we have uh, such an obstructed view. Uh, the one tile that was obstructed uh, could have probably been uh, adjusted out due to like a slight adjustment with the uh, camera location or maybe just it wasn't properly tilted just right, but uh, I, I suspect we could get this down to 100% you know, full visibility behind this cart. So that concludes my, my presentation for today. I'd, I'd, I appreciate your attention, and I'd like to say a special thanks to Dr. Uh, Bill Field and Dave, uh, who uh, helped me in this, this research. Also, VisionWorks Camera, who provided me with some uh, instruments to, to do some testing. And uh, also John Deere and Case, who allowed me to to do some testing on their on their ag equipment. So thank you very much and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Sean, for that excellent presentation. Uh, taking questions, if you'd like to uh, type those in that window, you're welcome to do that. And again, if you do have a web microphone, you may uh, raise your hand using the raise hand icon at the top, and we will uh, attempt to activate your your microphone. I would like to four questions, and the first one simply asks about your professional affiliation in terms of uh, your reason for participating today. If you you could know into the best. We realize you may have categories, but if you could choose the one that best fits your reason for People today. Our next question about the information that was presented today. If you could please tell us if you felt that the information was valuable and met your expectations. Okay, thank you for your input on that. Our next question asks about the technology today. Effective and usable for you. And if you in terms of, of um, technical issues, we would appreciate you uh, typing that in the chat window so that we can try to troubleshoot those in the future. Okay, thank you for your input on that. And our final question.
would you another in this series? And I will open that. And put on those poll questions. This time I'm going to turn things back over to uh, Sean and we will uh, attempt to his camera so you can see and talk with him. And uh, into the uh, questions window. Okay, so let's start off with some questions. Uh, here's a question. Uh, how do you deal with dirt, dirt on camera lenses, and are there self-cleaning lenses? So dirt on camera lenses is very similar to dirt on a mirror. Um, these cameras are waterproof, so the uh, operator can wash them off, you know, just with a, with a hose or, you know, wipe them off with a, a rag. And so they are quite durable and they're waterproof. And, so that is one way to deal with it. Uh, I do know that there are some manufacturers that make a, uh, a camera that has a, a self-cleaning or wiping lens that when the camera powers up and shuts down, it has a lens that automatically, um, automatically closes and opens, and it, it kind of wipes the camera lens. OK, so let's uh, have quite a few. Okay, we're going to put up some questions here. There we go. Uh, here's a question. How much would it cost to add supplemental exterior mirrors to a tractor? So this is a wide-ranging question. We, we can get anywhere from value mirrors that are very inexpensive. They can be you know, around 80 to $100. Um, a lot of the new tractors have what's called uh, motorized mirrors or, or automatic electric mirrors, and these are very expensive. Uh, they're typically included with um, packages on the tractor. So like, it depends on like a, a, a cab package. You know, you have a deluxe cab or you have a standard cab, and, and a lot of these packages are equipped with mirrors. So. Um, as for adding supplemental exterior mirrors to a tractor, you have anywhere from the value package was about eighty to a hundred dollars to um, John Deere or, or Case mirrors that are about uh, two three hundred dollars, and so they range quite a bit. So same as uh, camera technology, you can have anywhere from you know a fifteen dollar camera all the way up to you know three to five hundred dollar uh, kits. Or thousand dollar kits. It's, it just it has a huge range. Do we have okay? Can multiple cameras be viewed on a single monitor? So that's our next question. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, it depends on the type of display you have, but sometimes you can do what's called a split screen. So you can have you know two cameras side by side for each other. Uh, another option is called a uh, just a different input. So a lot of these monitors have a have a little button on the bottom, and they already have two inputs, and you just push that button to cycle between your two inputs. So that is that is a very good question. And so uh, it depends on your monitor once again on how many it'll allow you to see. But two is very common. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention while we're still on this topic would be uh, the topic of image mirroring. So sometimes there can be some uh, disorientation when you know trying to correct uh, your 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 course of driving by watching your camera you know input or what you see you know in your monitor, and uh, you can get what's called a mirroring effect where when you turn right you're not actually going right on your on your camera display. So a lot of uh, manufacturers actually make a mirroring feature. So when you actually turn right you go right on your on your uh, display. 
Okay, so here's our next question. I had a family member using a backup camera uh, run right into my car because it distorts the view and makes things look farther than they really are. What is the solution to this problem? So cameras, because they have, a lot of these cameras have a very wide angle lens. And so you get what's called a, a fish eye effect. And it causes things to be distorted and similar to like having a, a curved mirror. And a solution to this was like I, what I installed on Dave's UTV. And some cameras have a built-in grid that's just a uh, water print over the image. And it's always there. And by using a camera that has a built-in grid, the operator can, uh, once they determine you know, what the grid coincides with, so it is different on, you know, for every application depending on the angle. But once you know that the lines on that grid, uh, you know, the farthest grid is you know, say three foot or five foot away, the operator always has that reference point. So that's something to look into is to always choose a camera with a grid you know, water printed over the image. How do cameras tolerate salt on roads? So, like I said, they are waterproof, so they can be washed off. Uh, but typically, the mounting hardware is metallic, so um, they are usually, you know, powder coated or any some type of paint on them. But uh, like anything else, you know, salt can uh, erode and, and cause some, some rusting. But as for the lens, the lens is typically a very um, durable plastic, or not very many of them will use a, a glass lens, but they are a fairly durable uh, lens on them. So uh, similar to maybe the lens on your smartphone or something like that, they do resist scr uh, scratches fairly well. Uh, but uh, I think the main problem you'd have with salt on the roads would be causing any type of corrosion on the mounting hardware. Or brackets. Uh, next question is what about visibility during night operations? So one of the cameras I showed or a couple of them actually had some LED lights around the camera so uh, that is one option it helps to illuminate the, uh, the area or behind the, the camera uh, but another thing is uh, a lot of these agricultural equipment, you know, tractors and stuff have very good lighting on them, and they have 360 degree, you know, it, it lights the uh, the area around the, the tractor fairly well. And these cameras pick up low light situations uh, very well. Like I have one on my my car, and actually just my my tail lights or my reverse lights. Um, when they when I put the car in reverse, lights up the area very well, and and I have no problem with that. And the same is very true for these uh, agricultural applications. It doesn't take a huge amount of light to see the immediate area, um, but you will drop off faster. Like you won't be able to see as far back um, in low light conditions. But you know, immediate area, you know, the highest danger zone, you have fairly good visibility even in low light conditions. How vulnerable are these cameras to external damage from running into things or vehicles hitting them? So that's the one of the very nice things about camera technology is that uh, comparing them to like external mirrors, you know, you have hazards such as tree limbs or barns or buildings or anything like that. You know, they stick out and away from the tractor. Uh, these cameras are actually, they're protected fairly well. You know, you would actually have to you'd have to back into something first before it, it would hit the, the camera because it's protected by either the, the cab or the frame of the tractor or the implement that they're mounted to. So they're not very prone to being damaged uh, by you know, running into things. That's, that's actually the, you know, the purpose of having a camera to prevent you from, from backing into things. So um, they're not very prone to, to actually being damaged in that, in that respect because they are protected by their, their surroundings. Okay, so I think that's all of our questions. So uh, I'm going to hand this over to Paul and we'll wrap it up. Okay, thank you again, Sean, for that excellent presentation. Again, we appreciate you participating today. We'll be receiving a uh,
an invitation to that. Um, again, 